Okay. Now, if we've done everything correct, I think we are ready to roll. Yes, it looks like it is working. Okay, so this is going to be a complete setup tutorial for uh, Vorpex Oculus Rift 3.5 patch for Star Citizen. So we're going to start off with a couple of things here. Is that what you see is what I see in my um, uh, headset because I got my mirror on my Oculus finally going and tapping into my headset. So, what I'm going to do is pull up my desktop. Uh, my desktop is on monitor 1, and then I'm going to pull up monitor 2, which has my other desktop. And then I have a third monitor that has the mirror on it above that's right around here that you can't actually see due to port limitations on the back of graphics card. Uh, turns out you can SLI in VR and all sorts of other issues, but um, uh, I have that third monitor set up to where it's mirroring uh, like a, a web browser and some volume settings in my music player and stuff like that. So, but we're just going to pretend that you have two monitor setups. And this is what I'm basically looking at is my desktop right here. So, um, oh no, come on, really? Right now, we do it live. Fine, you get one. Okay, we do it live. So, after you install your Vorp X, um, uh, come on, man, give me a break. After you install your Vorp X uh, software, it will be given a couple of different uh, options over here in the uh, top right, which are Start Vorpex, uh, configure Vorpex, and uh, blah, blah, blah. So what we're going to do is we're going to assume that you've gone through the install process, and that uh, is an email that requires you to buy it for, I think, $30 off their website. I'll post the link below. And then you need to email them, and they'll send you a key, and then you put in your email address, and then that key that they send you into this thing, and then it unlocks the software, and then you could use it. And so be sure to save that install.exe, uh, on like a Google Drive or somewhere else because that install will just automatically update to the latest version no matter what. And then you should just need to reuse that same exact key that they emailed you no matter how many years later. So that's a quick setup on that. We're going to assume that you've gone through that stage already. So what we need to do now is um, uh, start up Vorpex. First off, I'm going to get my chat window here. Start up Chatty. Alrighty, cool. And this is a, one of the reasons why you need an open port on your graphics card is to be able to pin a window. Uh, that's an Oculus feature that's experimental, and I'll make a whole separate video on that if people want. Uh, that's, that's great for streaming for obvious reasons. Okay, so... Uh, we have our mirror set up. We have Vorp, we have Vorp X uh, that we double click and we start. And so this should just work like right after you install it. And what I'm going to do is we're going to close that window. Go ahead and get rid of that. And then we're going to launch Star Citizen now. So Vorpex automatically hooks into Star Citizen, and you could right-click on it and, um, let's see here, configure Vorpex. So whenever it detects the next .exe, it's going to automatically try and hook into that and uh, show it in VR. And that includes, like, running OBS or Discord or something like that. So be sure that the game that you want to launch is going to be the last thing that you launch after you turn it on. And then you could also right click on it down here and then pause the watcher by hitting that little thing right there. I might need to zoom in these windows so you could see them a little closer, but 
we'll see how it looks in the replay and uh, I might make a second more clear video and delete this first one but so uh, real quickly I got to make some settings I was experimenting with Oculus Rift and then run it as administrator that was just some stuff I was doing earlier you don't have to run it as administrator but it helps me for recording and OBS reasons no, later. I don't want to. Okay, so we have Vorpex running here in the corner. We can see the watcher is not paused. And so we now launched Star Citizen. And hopefully, if I've done this correctly, it'll still be hooking into just exactly what my headset is seeing. Okay, so there we go. Vorpex attaching to Star Citizen. Now Oculus detects it loading something. Sometimes the Star Citizen logo pops up, but current patch I think it broke that at one point it was able to to detect the dot exe and it was showing that right there okay so now we are in vorp x mode and whenever I look around nothing happens and as you can see I have my chat window pinned and that's a whole other thing that I'll get to later uh, so from vorp x one of the biggest menu quickies that you could realize is that you hit middle mouse button and notice how it's saying this is experimental, you know, this is not supported, blah de blah de blah We're just going to go past that. Because all this is doing is basically loading uh, Vorpex's 2D into two stereostropic, uh, into, an, into my two screens in a stereostropic uh, image. All right, so if you hit middle mouse button, you'll immediately notice that it doesn't fall around and I could and I can actually see the edges of my screen. That's called the Vorpex Edge Peak feature, and that's middle mouse button. And as you could realize, that's going to mess up a lot of other things for controls, but we'll work through that later. Um, uh, so middle mouse button does that, and if you hit the delete key, hey, look at that. We got the Vorpex main settings menu. Now, I'm going to double check some things to make sure that that is visible. Get that there. Well, I can't really verify that. Um, maybe if I just pin real quick. Yes, okay, I can see it. Making sure that all my menus are showing up. This is my first time doing this type of tutorial. Okay, so now that you can see exactly what I'm seeing, this is the main menu settings, and I have it set to full VR mode for this game. I don't really mess with the head tracking sensitivity or 3D depth or anything like that, but you guys can at your own discretion or leisure. If things make it a little bit better on your setting, on your system and setup, then go for it. Uh, but I just literally just swap it over to full VR mode. It might be defaulted into, I think, immersive screen mode or cinema mode. So you just want to go over to full VR. And then other than that, this window here has a whole bunch of other settings that will help you from device to device. Because there are Pimax 4K, 8Ks, there's Vibes, there's all sorts of more options to choose from. But I just have the Oculus Rift. So, full VR mode, and then have center tracking for alt space. That'll just help you every now and then. Universal default alt space to um, uh, center your headset. So we hit OK and save. And middle mouse button pops up the menu, and that allows us to actually hit our menu options. And that's basically it for getting the um, uh, Oculus Rift working with Star Citizen. It should just hook into and run right out of the box uh, via defaults. The only thing you'll need to do is hit delete and then go to full VR mode. And then obviously using the middle mouse button to um, uh, edge peak. That'll help you whenever you're at loading screens because otherwise it looks like this. And you can't really look away and it's all weird. So uh, I'll walk around for a little bit, load up a ship, and I'll show you some other things that I do. This part of the tutorial is going to go into direct HOTAS settings. So let's say that you got your HOTAS set up. There's all sorts of videos on 
um, uh, for how to how to get your hotas's throttle and stuff working properly again and uh, you could reference those for that but mine specifically is to get ease of access for um, uh, things in uh, VR specifically for the X52 Pro and I'll also show you a couple of rebinds that I do okay so you notice that I still have the edge peak feature on so now let us hit middle mouse button and then boom now as you can see there may or may not be a little bit of black edge so if I hit vorpex controls shift and mouse scroll then I can scroll in the actual image and you want that to basically be filling up the entire border and basically taking up your entire periphery you can use the delete key to go to settings and move that image around I believe and adjust all sorts of stuff from there but as soon as it edges out all the black on your face then you're good to go and you just mouse keyboard like regular I forget that I am all the way over at um, uh, Art Corp, so we're just going to have to take the tram over to the Riker Memorial Spaceport. I'll have um, uh, I'll put down below skippable. Hot links to get to each specific part of the tutorial. First, we got a quick little jog through Riker Memorial, or through Art Corp. And uh, yeah, as you can see, it just uh, works. Now, another thing you'll notice immediately, well, especially when I get to my ship, but we can show you right away, is that if you hit F1, there we go, um, kind of impossible to see. This is where you want that middle mouse button, edge peak, and then that way, boom, you can actually use your menus, and that is exactly what that is for, for seeing the edges. Uh, remember that the HUD is not optimized for VR yet, so all of the stuff in the corners is basically useless to you. And that's going to be quite critical when it comes to actually finding the ship and you lose your pilot helmet HUD. But since you get full-blown uh, MFD usage whenever you just look at them, uh, the better your ship is with MFDs and stuff like that, the more realistic it's going to work with VR. Yes, yes, it's all pretty, and I have a video walking through and doing some flying around the sunset. Right now, we're more concerned with controls. Waiting passengers should be mindful of the platform's edge. Strong winds. If you haven't played 3.5 yet, well, the big update is here, and it added the full city planet of uh, Art Corp. It's got a Coruscant Blade Runner kind of futuristic Star citizen -y vibe to it, and uh, I think you guys will enjoy. If you're deciding when should I get in, I think now's about the time because all the um, uh, additions that they've made recently have really smoothed out the FPS, allowing me to capture at full resolution and even record on it, so that's nice. Hopefully start to see a lot more content. I want to finally start getting decent at racing as well as flying with the new flight model in general. Liberty Lake, the taste of freedom. Is, is that how it works? Uh, 
Okay, 70 seconds. And remember, being in VR allows you to walk up to things and... Various news information ticking here. This is more news. Some economy information goes here. <laughs> I love placeholders. They're funny. That and T-posing. All right, 40 seconds. Contact Park for Business Development Bureau for details. I can read. <clears throat> but yeah, hopefully, if the footage goes well, this will be up on YouTube no. tomorrow. But, I see they came first, bastards. seat next to the gel bees savor the squish advertisement now I want some warheads something ridiculously sweet it's bad for you a torpedo burrito stand clear that's just a RSI all right well let's go through the city y'all So what's great about this is this should actually also be the first recording of uh, what it actually looks like from my headset on the screen. Normally you have the full window, which doesn't really represent exactly what I'm looking at, but now you guys get to see exactly what I'm staring at when I'm staring at, at it. And that is handy for me. Alright, so we're going to just do a quick little, uh, what, 40 second tram ride? down on the plat on the road I might have just died oh look there's the torpedo burrito unleash a payload of flavor all right I'm gonna do a quick run over to now I have all my profile stuff saved so I can always get it back which is no biggie but what we're gonna do is I'm gonna hop into a ship and I'm gonna show you what it should be what the control should fly like and then I'm going to go to defaults for the X52 Pro and I'm going to get rid of all the stuff that um, uh, screws up the VR and then I'm going to add all the little uh, quality of life hotkeys that I like and then I'll upload this profile down below as well um, okay so that's at Shibuya okay 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 Mustang area 18 sure we'll go with the Mustang and notice how I Your use ship has the been edge beak the following landing in order to look at this menu, because otherwise it would just be like this. It takes all of us Hangar 2. To keep our safe and so you run over into Rocket Memorial proper. And we're looking for Hangar 2. On the right here should be these 1 to 5. 1, 2. On the floor. Yes. We F that. Hello. Holding the Hello. F menu gives the Welcome inner thought, or the F that menu. Servicing the greater area 18 
what they need is a little icon to so show that the elevator is moving because you can't hear or really oh Jesus and sometimes it is the void okay so try that again hey it's an elevator you can walk into it but sometimes you just don't want to I don't have my um, uh, abyss ring on can't fight Artorius without it or actually go into the abyss without it either way uh, yeah, just reload the door whenever that happens. So we're going to hop into my Mustang and we're going to show you what the flight control should be like with VR. And then we're going to default everything and I'll show you how to rebind it. And, uh, as you can see, full working. It looks 3D enough. It's it's. It's not real 3D, but it's, it definitely looks it. It's about as 3D as you're going to be able to get for now. So, um, you hop into your ship. The F that menu. The F that pilot seat. And then, okay, so, defaults. This is not a Vorpex issue, this is a Star Citizen issue. This is where we begin our tutorial for HOTAS controls. You hit the Z key and that turns off toggles on off the uh, free look ability so uh, now that you got your free look toggled you can also hit R and that Welcome. Your journey begins now. All systems operational. you hit R and I guess that turns on the ships because normally that does the gimbal automation control and I have it set to um, uh, wherever I look my gimbals track uh, so from here let's just edge peak F1 com link contacts area 18 landing services and then she'll start to open up after we ask for permission to leave that there is atmospheric flight modeling and gravity and all that such. We need to basically just rise straight up and pull up the landing gear. Landing gear retracted. Get up out of the spaceport. Yep, there are three ships parked down there, indeed. Okay. So. This is what it should basically just look like, flight control-wise. Um, with the X-52 Pro, our defaults, it should do left, right, up, down. That's throttle up and that's throttle forward and with the new flight model you have this big rotating uh, button which normally adjusts trim in games such as uh, war thunder for old school planes whenever you get injured uh, what that does is your throttle minimum maximum and so you adjust that all the way and when you're in uh, zero g space it'll basically shoot the engine uh, as fast as possible till it reaches that line so for dogfighting i like to keep it you know right around there so but if you're on a planet that's got a lot of gravity and you're in the atmosphere, it's going to be hard getting past, you know, your regular speed. To save your engine, go ahead and set it at that little red line. That's whenever you basically go past the um, uh, engine's comfortable zone. Um, you can always set it up higher and then hit the afterburner. And your engines will go as quick as they can buster in whatever conditions they are currently in. But that's not needed. Um, so yeah, we're going to go ahead and... I 
you can see the edge of my gun barrel right there. That's kind of cool. So now that we have everything in proper working order, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go to defaults, and I'll show you how to rebind for the X-52 Pro. Uh, so hit escape, edge peak options, key bindings, flight, no, 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 advanced customization down there. Let me go to control profiles. I'm going to save control settings as X52 Pro Chachi VR Vortex. May 19. 3.2. Warpex 3.5. Oh, I can't do dots. Okay. Uh, then, yeah, we'll just do May 19. Uh, save. Okay, cool. So, profiles. Clear all device bindings. Uh, I actually have a whole bunch of other crap and stuff. Um, reset to defaults. Keyboard. Mouse. Joystick and joystick. Okay, so um, okay, so we hit Z and then we enable our headset free look. Easy peasy. That's the same. R is the same. We do that to enable the um, uh, reticle for uh, tracking gimbals. Gimbal weapons are amazing in VR. Um, now we have nothing really bound, but you'll notice that my look is up, down, left, right. That's just, you know, natural for the joystick. It goes immediately into like the X and Y axis. Uh, but no controls for the X52 are working. So we go to escape, edge peak. Key bindings, advanced customization at the bottom left, control profiles, and we go to the default X52 Pro. And then I have my joystick on the first one, and then my wheel is the second one. So we just load that, and then we test it out. Yeah, okay, disabling free toggle. Okay, so you'll immediately notice that it's still doing look access whenever you um, uh, have it off of free look toggle. If you turn free look toggle on though, or off though, the ship actually works and controls. Um, so we're gonna have to work out a couple of things first. Hit the Z button to turn off the free look and so we know that look left, right, up and down is bound when free look is off. So what we need to do is go to options, hit that middle mouse button to get that free look, key bindings, advanced customization controls. We go over here to the very bottom right and we go to joystick HOTAS. Now we go all the way up and we're looking for flight view. Look left, right, up, down is on the access as well as on this thumb hat. Well, that's really cool and all if you have a whole bunch of monitors and you need to aim your gimbals and blah de blah. But we got a head and an infinite 360 spherical uh, monitor now, so we don't need any of these. And that opens you up for shields or all sorts of other type of binds on those on the thumb, as well as well, not really that access cycle camera view. I uh, just got rid of that. Whatever. Uh, dynamic zoom in and out, X axis rotation, don't need that. Alright, so that should be all of the look issues sorted out. We hit escape. And now, hit middle mouse button to go back into full VR. And now our stick is working properly. Oh, snap, they added uh, yaw animations. Cool. And also, a lot of people wonder why um, uh, your yaw is set to... Um, uh, roll instead of 
um, uh, your, uh, what is that, x-axis. Uh, and basically, you got to think about um, uh, dogfighting in zero G's is um, not needed on the y-axis to turn and pull into your target like you would in atmosphere. So if there's no atmosphere holding you back, it's a lot easier to just follow and track your target by moving your joystick left and right. Also, you got to understand the difference between your G types. There's side to side G's, which Formula One drivers will take in a corner. Two, three, four, five G's, depending on the speed and uh, uh, angle of the corner itself. Um, uh, what you need to realize is that that's uh, lateral G's, and that's making the blood in his body rush side to side. Okay? That's not doing anything with the blood in his brain. As soon as a jet fighter pilot pulls up on the stick, all of the blood in his brain drains down into the rest of his body and it pulls into his uh, lower guts and his legs. That's why G-suits have uh, cinching devices which um, uh, they kind of like pull tight their legs which uh, restricts the blood flow vessels. That's why uh, vertical G's on a vertical axis, not a lateral one, are the most important to uh, worry about in dog fighting. So that alone should answer most of your most of the questions as why you have your joystick set up like that defaulted so far into the future. Uh, it just makes more sense when you really, really start to think about all the things. So now that we got our flight taken care of and we're moving nicely, uh, there's still a couple of quality of life issues. This little button in between your roller right here and what should be your uh, thrust button is set to reverse, I believe. So that's forward, backwards, reverse. We don't want that. We actually want that as a space brake. What it's going to be is there's that uh, side little, um, uh, the little roller that does the throttle. You got that little button that's in between that and the other roller and the button on that other roller. Uh, that button on the other roller, we're gonna switch to afterburner. That button in between is going to be space brake, and then that button on top, which is now afterburner, we're gonna de uh, rebind that to decoupled mode. And that way you have access to decoupled on your button, you got space brake on the little in between, and then you got afterburner all right there, easily uh, attainable in a dogfight. And that's gonna be the key to a lot of ease of use and quality of life issues. So, let's go to do all of that. Key bindings, advanced customization. Okay, so uh, we'll set up flight targeting later. Uh, flight movement, jump to down. Oh, we need to go to joystick HOTAS. Okay, so flight movement, uh, roll, pitch, yaw, all of that's good. Match target velocity, we're not going to need that bound, get rid of that. Uh, space brake, unbind that. Decoupled mode, unbind that. Strafe up, strafe down, strafe left, strafe right, that's all good. Uh, throttle forward. Okay, so here we go, strafe forward, backwards, invert. Um, what I do need to do is hit that button again because I'm still moving backwards. Okay, so now that button's, and now, oh, look, you can even see on the stick. If I hit, I get what they were going for, for but everybody has their HOTAS set up for a zero to 100 throw, not a negative 100 to positive 100 throw. So, I mean, I, I see what they were getting at, but it's, I think it's actually better with the adjustable throttle and the 0 to 100 throw, as you'll see in a moment whenever I start to get going here. Okay, so now that that's all done, I can go to Options, Key Bindings, Joystick Hotos, Advanced Customization, and then Flight Movement. And then this button for... What is it? Strafe forward, backwards, invert. We're going to unbind that one. And then everything else should be normal. We're going to undo the afterburner. Cruise control. I need to figure out what button 19 is. That's handy. 
Landing system toggle, that's good. Auto land, that's good. Quantum. Uh, we get rid of quantum. Because we're going to have that on our keyboard and we're going to have those bound to separate uh, B and J keys. That way you can actually, uh, you don't have to hold down the quantum. It's a separate button and that'll fix a lot of bugs that happen with the HUD and system like that. Because they're bound, not because they're bound to the same one, but because they because we bind them to separate keys that allows us to circumvent some of those issues. Uh, but we'll get to that later. So that's all good. We need to go for afterburner. Is now going to set to that, uh, the big, you got the big turning knob on top and then you got this small turning knob on the right. Gonna do that button on that turning knob, 31. That is going to be the um, uh, afterburner. Now, important issue, that button on the X52 Pro is not accessible by default. You cannot normally press it. What you have to do, alt tab. Okay, really quickly here. Control panel, you have to go to hardware and sound. You go to devices and printers. And then you got your X52 Pro Hotas. Go to Game Controller Settings. Now, if that button for you on that little secondary knob isn't working, go to this menu, go to Properties, and then you'll see this uh, play this little menu if you haven't ever been here before. This should be turned on by default whenever you plug it in from the first time. Uh, you want to disable Enable Clutch Mode. So turn off this check mark if it's checked and then hit apply. That will basically do stuff with your clutch button, which is your pinky trigger, but I have that for uh, something else, as I'll show you in a bit. Um, uh, so that will also, for some whatever reason, enable that button on that second roller. Uh, it's just not, that button flat out does not work unless you do that. So now that we got that working, get out of all of this. Okay, and then where's my and then we hit Oculus Home button and now we're back in the game. Okay, so um now that we got that uh straightforward backwards inverted, uh or no, now that we got that afterburner button workable, you set it to that actual thing, you double click and hit boom, and it should be 31. Uh, that is the uh, infamous X52 and X52 Pro's 31st button that is hard to get to. Uh, so yeah, unset that through Windows and then you can actually use that. Alright, so after burner, now we need to do our um, uh, toggle decoupled mode on the top button up here. I have no clue if y'all could see that camera well enough, but the top button on the big roller and then we go for brake space brake is going to be that button in between all right now you saw that we had a couple issues with that top button being a uh, decrease something and something else so you're going to want to go all the way over to i think interaction get rid of these click right click click right click all right so that was your interaction mode activate inner thought and focus and decrease throw power decrease throw power took care of that um uh middle bind button but if we go back to movement and we double check with the decoupled mode, button eight, it says the following is on break. So we do fine. So that space break we already got bound. Ground vehicle. Probably is break for that ground vehicle movement. Okay, yes, break 
for vehicle. We unbind that. Boom. Okay, and that should be everything for flight basics. We hit middle mouse button, and now we're in full VR. And so our 0 to 100 is on a throw. We have our big uh, roller on our uh, throttle limiter. The button on the tiny roller is the afterburner. The button in between is brake. And then the big button on top is decoupled mode, which is now sub shown by this little icon in the bottom corner of your HUD. So all of that's done. We can space brake, we can afterburn, we can roll our throttle to limit set, um, and then we have a beautiful, beautiful view. Of the clouds and a high kind of art court, kind of nice city skyline down below. Um, okay, so that's all of the um, uh, flight basics for controls on the X-52 Pro. The next couple of things we're going to do are targeting and um, uh, like combat and dogfighting kind of basics or uh, controls quality of life from there. So we're actually just going to quit game. Oh, uh, yeah, didn't mean to actually quit quit. I meant to go back to the menu. Okay, now that we're here, we'll go to Arena Commander and set up some quality of life um, uh, dogfighting controls. So just load up a quick uh, you know, Vandal Swarm, Pirate Swarm, either way, and just launch the game. Whatever, whatever uh, ship you have loaded defaults, doesn't matter. I think this is the Anvil Arrow. Anvil Aerospace. All yes, okay. Online go me and you pay 20 bucks a month and have access to the rental ship okay so when the game starts swarm initiated uh we got to do our regular z for look lock toggle r for weapon lock toggle and then here are the quality of life controls for the x52 pro dogfight version all right go to Hotas, go to advanced customization, like we normally do. Then we're going to want to go to, hang on here. Um, okay. So we're going to want to go to flight targeting. Okay. Aim left, aim right. Don't need any of that on the hats anymore because we have access to that on our face. Thank goodness we can aim with our headset now. Okay, so we got all of that done. Reticle focus. So this is going to be um, uh, target whatever is directly in front of you. And I have that bound. Button 20 is defaulted, so I keep it as that. And that's the uh, top hat forward button. So whatever you're looking at, you hit that, you target it. Easy peasy. Cycle all, um, uh, we're gonna go actually find the nearest hostile target. Button 22, defaulted back button on that up hat. And then we double check, but yes, button 22, the down on the top hat. That's the uh, second hat on the joystick next to the, to the left of the missile button. Okay, so now we have two leftover uh, buttons on that hat. So what I like to do is cycle all targets on the left, 
and then cycle all friendly targets on the right. 23 and 21. So those are those four done. Um, next, scanner target focus. Uh, okay, so here we go. Reticle mode. Toggle. Um, I set that on my pinky trigger. Button six. That is normally your trigger. That was normally your uh, F button. Your interactive thought menu. We unbound all of those earlier in the video. Uh, so we hit that, and now our trigger is reticle switch, and I'll show you what that does here in a second. Uh, so now that we got that taken care of, we go to weaponry. Uh, the Joy X52 Pro has the double push trigger button. And so if you are clever and remember about that, as a feature, you can hit the first trigger, and that's respawn, fire, mining, laser, and scanner, radar ping. Yes, we want to keep those. Then Fire Weapon Group 2, you can actually pull all the way down on the trigger and access its second trigger pull. So now if you pull first pull button, your first set of weapons, pull all the way down on the trigger, it'll fire both groups, and that's pretty nice. Uh, gimbal Assist Lock Modes, that's R on the keyboard, so we'll keep that there for now. Turret, Gyro, Stabilization, we don't need that, but here's a big funky one uh acquire missile lock and launch missile those are bound to the same key and i hate it you're always having trouble acquiring the lock and then you launch the missile accidentally but if you want to you know do all this other stuff it's it's just a big pain and it never works whenever you want it to work exactly so what i've done is acquire missile lock to the button to the right oh no not down half to the button on, to the right of missile lock and that is normally cycle countermeasure ammo, and we are actually just going to keep it as that. No biggie there. Then launch missile, we're going to keep the same as that flip panel button with the big red increased mining laser and scanning increased radar angle. Cool, yeah, button two. Boom. Now that frees us up for a whole other hat uh, and one other button on the joystick. So launch and cycle are still the same. Now we have these that I actually like to put on that second hat now that we have taken our look off. Raise shield level front. I go forward on that hat. Raise shield back. Down on the hat. Raise shield left. And then raise shield right. It won't let you put shields on your top and bottom, but it will let you do quick kind of forward backwards if you know that you're going to be you know, coming in from a certain angle of attack on a certain target and how they shoot. Uh, reset all shields is now that free button on the left, which was, used to be, uh, weapon set number two. And then that should be it for defensive. Uh, power radar HUD, I don't really mess with any of that, but we do need to go to ground vehicle... Fire group weapon one, fire group weapon two. Remove that and put that as the, ah, no, as the second trigger pull. Boom, button 15. And I believe that should be it. Quality of life changes done. We now control pro profiles and save controls as whatever you want it to. Warning. There are multiple hostiles Hit the middle mouse now. button, and then now we are ready to really start flying, boys. All right, so uh, that middle target button, that up on the top hat, that targets whatever is in front of you. Boom, that works. Here's a little quality of life I like to do here. Menu, down, target status on that window. All right, so... Launch countermeasures. All right, so that's our ship that we can see right there. And then that is our shields. We have that on our secondary hat, as we can see right there. And then hit that button that used to be fire two. Boom, that's reset shield. So I'm gonna put it to all forward shield. And then I'm gonna set my throttle limiter to a little bit above maximum. 
that way. I know if I go to half throttle and brake, it'll be right around there. All right, so we hit the back button, and that acquires the nearest target. AI Crew Aurora. So it's an Aurora. His name is Rusty. And so here is where that other bind comes in on the trigger. Your pinky button. Alright, so notice how our trigger pull does both sets of weapons now. That's nice. But also, if you're fighting in VR and using your gimbal weapons, you might want to think about swapping it into the other targeting mode. Hit the pinky trigger now that you've done what I told you, and boom. You can now keep a better eye on the target instead of be looking at the reticle. And for when your actual uh, middle of your face is actually tracking, uh, I just find this little quality of life thing a little bit better for dog fights. And you'll also notice that when you're in VR, you cannot see the edges of your screen, so you're going to have to really, really track incredibly well with your eye on the ball. And notice that there's maximums that your turrets and weaponry can actually reach. The turret on top of me is going to have a lot better reach above than the actual side weaponries that have side-to-side -side gimbals. So, knowing that, take into account your weapon loadouts. Break, 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 break. Bring them into all four of your lasers firing arcs. Let have it. Easy peasy. All right, and those are the quality of life changes for flight and combat with X52 Pro, as well as a full setup guide for the Vorpex VR features for Star Citizen 3.5 patch here in May of 2019. I hope you guys liked and enjoyed this video. Uh, follow along for more VR content in Star Citizen and out uh, to come. Thank you guys for watching. Stay safe. Fly right. Bing. Bong. Bye.